Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Thought I'd do a vlog today. The weather's kind of tranquil and kind of seasonable right now, but there's a lot of buzz and hype online about potentially this pattern change late in the month. And there is a pattern change on the way, but I wanted to do a detailed vlog about what's going on and why you gotta kind of pump the brakes a little bit on potential winter weather, especially at the ranges we're looking at way, way out in the future and heading into late February, early March. Though it is the snowiest time statistically, and historically here in the Carolinas, there's some red flags that I wanna point out to you today. So let's get right to what's happening right now because one of the big things you see, and we show this often, is the six to 10 day temperature outlook, and occasionally we'll show you the eight to 14 day temperature outlook. So in both outlooks, the first thing that catches your eye is that below average temperatures here in the Southeast, especially in the eight to 14 day range, which remember is not over the next eight to 14 days, it's from the 14th through the 20th. So it's that time span of about six days between the 14th and 20th, which is the middle of next week until next weekend. And you see the below average, but the caution I would have with these maps, and we probably don't do a good enough job of explaining this, this is the chances of below average temperatures, not how cold it's going to be. And what I mean by that is just because it's darker blue doesn't mean it's colder. It's like rain chance. The chance of rain just means the chance of rain. It doesn't mean the, the higher the chance, the heavier or longer lasting the rain is. It just means there's a better chance and a very high confidence that it's going to rain. For the temperature outlooks, it's the same thing. So our average high next week is in the upper 50s. Uh, I think it's about 57 in this time frame. So the chance of being below average, if you look at the chart here, and I'll kind of pull this down, whoops, and I'll pull this down to the bottom here in a second, is the, the chances of below average temperatures are in that 60 to 70 percent chance range so that means there's a 60 to 70 percent chance it will be below 57 degrees doesn't tell you how far below is it 56 is it 55 is it 46 is it 36 these maps don't tell you so i just want you to be wary of that when you look at this so the excitement though is that the fact that we're going to have below average temperatures and what is a pretty favorable storm track so this is the 500 millibar chart these are basically up there around 15,000 feet into the atmosphere um, you know basically 15 to depending on the time of year could even be higher 15 to 20,000 feet up shows us where the ridges and the troughs are basically what the jet stream is doing and when you see the bluer colors that's not necessarily colder that just means lower pressure or storms uh, in this case what we're seeing here going into next week and I'll go all the way into the middle of next week. So we'll go to about uh, Valentine's Day here. We'll stop it right about here. Is we start to see a ridge build over Alaska. Let me pop, let me stop this right here again. So why is that important? You're like, Brad, why is there a ridge over Alaska? One of the things about weather for us in the Southeast, when it's warm in Alaska, it's usually cold here. And you see that reflected pretty well in this chart. You see the big ridge over Alaska. There's a dip over the Eastern US. And this brings cold air here. Warm air surges up here. My concern with this setup is one, yes, it's a good storm track. This is the kind of storm track you wanna see for winter weather in the east and the southeast. And the reason I say that is the Pacific jet's coming down here, uh, the polar jet is up in here, and sometimes you can get things to sink up here. But the fact that the, the, the subtropical or the or, um, Pacific jet is cranking up right there, that's a really good storm track. My concern with the trough though, and this is where I start to get a little red flags here, is going into late next week into next weekend, <laughs> excuse me, the pattern shows this trough kind of in a weird angle. It's kind of off in this direction where I would like to see it down here, okay? What I mean by that is the dip in the jet stream is out here and the lowest pressures and the coldest air is actually up here and not down here. So it's cold, don't get me wrong, it's below average, but is it cold enough for snow? Remember, it could be 20 degrees below average late next week and that still is way above freezing. So it's not always how cold it is. It's like you gotta time out the cold and the moisture together, which is always the biggest dilemma here in the Carolinas. So my concern looking at these charts and just so I'm totally transparent with you is, yeah, I like the storm track, but man, I do not like that this trough is oriented this way. If I'm in the Northeast, I'm probably a little more giddy about this as a snow lover, but in the Mid-Atlantic and Carolinas, ugh, this is not a good setup for snow right now. Could it be? Yes. The fact that we have this trough in the area is great, but I have real concerns about the orientation of this setup and the lack of cold air. I love the storm track. I mean, this storm track, you look at this, look, I mean, these storms are just barreling across the southern U.S. through Texas, Gulf of Mexico, and hopefully up the East Coast. 
But man, the cold air is all the way up here in Canada. It's not coming south. We got to get it down into the northeast of the Great Lakes. And we don't have a ton of snowpack over the United States. There's very little snowpack in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast. So any cold air coming down is moving over warm ground. It's not refrigerated. It's going to modify a little bit, which is another red flag. Something else I looked at are the surface temperatures. So what do the surface temperatures look like in this scenario? We can show you the same uh, ensembles from the European. And you can see going into late next week, yeah, they're below average, but they're actually closer to average in many locations day by day. It does get a little colder next weekend. And there are some signs of colder air over us, but that's not, that's not super cold air. So to me, the concern here is the lack of, of cold air. So you guys know my winter weather forecasting rules. Here they are if you've ever seen them. So 10, 7 to 10 days out, I start looking for patterns. I'm looking for that pattern right now. We're almost there, okay? We're almost there from a pattern recognition standpoint that at least we have a good storm track, but we're not quite there yet. We're getting close, okay? So that's where we're at. But some of this is even beyond the 10-day range. So that's why even my winter weather forecasting rules, I'm not getting caught up in this because some of this is 14, 15 days out, which is beyond the scope of what we should even be bothering to look at at this point, other than us as weather weenies who love looking at this stuff. So just to give you an idea of this, here's our temperature forecast over the next 15 days, right? From, there's my phone going off, from the European ensembles. The red line are our average highs. The blue line is the average lows. You can see the forecast or the output from the model shows way above here, but then does show below. But look at the numbers. It's below average next week, but the highs are generally in the upper 40s to near 50, which is cold for this time of year. Hence, these maps make total sense, right? Make total sense because what you're seeing is below average temperatures. But notice the temperatures are not really conducive for winter weather unless they trend colder and these overnights get a little colder and the moisture times out during the overnight. So that's why I said we're trying to thread a needle here. We can look at the ensembles for snowfall. This is the GFS, goes out 10 days for Charlotte. We got a trace there and a one inch there, but they mean there's not enough snow to even show up in the forecast in the next 10 days. So as I mentioned, my rules, seven to 10 days, there's no pattern there, but let's look at a little bit longer. We'll go 15 days out for the sake of argument. This is the European ensembles. They are showing something in the day 14, 15 range. Remember, this is the 19th through the 21st. Today is the 7th of February. There are some hints of maybe something here, but the grand totals here are like 10th to a half and an inch. And if you're talking 15 days out, that is not something I'm pinning a lot of hope on right now. So just to sum all this up, here's the deal. It is going to get colder next week. It is going to stay colder probably through the 20th or 21st. We have an active storm track. So yeah, it's something to keep an eye on. But right now, I would not pin my hopes on winter weather just yet. Maybe it's the fact that it's been so long since we've seen snow. We're grasping for straws. But that also should be a red flag. It's been so long since we've seen snow for a reason. The pattern and the climate has not been favorable for it because of the lack of cold air, especially over parts of the northern U.S. and Canada, where we normally would have snowpack this time of year. The reason we get so much snow on average in the past this time of year is because if you think about what's happening, um, let me go forward here. I'm going to pose this next week. We'll just use this model, for instance. Typically, you know, 10, 20 years ago, by late February, you've got really deep snowpack over most of the U.S., maybe all the way down to parts of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and the Northeast. So this would all be snowpack. So when we get these storm tracks coming like this across the Southeast, there's cold air to the North over snowpacked ground that can supply cold air. And so late February, early March, we would tend to get big snowstorms in the southeast because of the late winter snowpack to the north and the fact that we get this spring or Pacific jet to be really active. Problem is this year, there's no snow cover to the north. You got to go all the way up into Canada before you get snowpack. So these are all things I look at. It's a holistic approach in forecasting. I don't look at single pieces of data. I know this is an exciting storm track. But the cold air, folks, I'm telling you, 
could be lacking. Of course, you know I'll be watching it, and I hope this actually comes to fruition and we get something out of it, but right now, it's a little wild to be speculating so far out that we're going to see something when the pattern just has not been conducive and it's 15 days ago away to go. So we'll keep an eye on it, but I do want to, all my snow lovers, don't give up hope. If we can get at some point in the next month, we still have a chance. You got to get past the middle of March before you can really write things off. And we're not there yet, but we're also not there yet for a winter weather event in the long range.